Hello everyone and welcome back to another Minecraft update video. 1.15 pre-release 2 is out and it came out on a Monday. I believe Mojang's plan now is to just get these pre-releases out when it is convenient to do so, so as much testing can be done as possible. So as always, there are bug fixes which we'll get to in this video. First of all, we're going to address these two points and then we're going to come back and talk about how chunk loading and performance in the game works as there's been some open communication from Mojang on this. But first of all, those two changes, interactions with anvils and with grindstones will now become a part of statistics. So if we jump into the menu here, you can see interactions with anvil. If we scroll down a little bit, interactions with grindstone. Both of these will now be counted. The other feature relates to one added in this update cycle, being able to set your spawn point even when you're not sleeping in a bed. You can now see there is a message in chat saying respawn point set. And here's the thing, if I click on this bed again, we're not going to get another message because that's actually my respawn point. So it's kind of a way to tell where yours is. If I go click on this bed, you can see it's now been set over here and there. And so the point is, if you click on it and it's already your respawn point, you don't get a message in chat. Now let's get to this bit in the change log, tweaked chunk loading performance calculations. So a few days ago, one of the developers of Java Edition, Slice Lime, made this post to the community over on their Reddit. And I think it's fantastic that they're having this kind of open communication with us explaining what it is they're doing with the game. So Slice Lime explains how the game works and explains how they're trying to make optimizations that are going to benefit everyone. It's really worth a read. I'll put a link to it in the description box below. But for now, I'll just boil it down to the key points. So the game has to allocate the resources available to it to do things like rendering the game on your screen, calculate where the mobs are moving, load chunks into the world, try and hit an FPS goal. And what the team are doing is looking at tweaking the parameters on what the game decides to prioritize. Is it going to try and give you the highest FPS it can or will it focus on loading in chunks? And that last part is actually precisely the problem. So here in the menu, we're going to use these sliders as an example. I have always played this game with max frame rate on as high as I can. And this means the game is actually going to try and prioritize giving me that max frame rate over rendering in all of the chunks into the game. So if I were to then lower this down, chunk loading performance would increase and this applies to 1.14 and it is in this pre-release and the last one that they're making optimizations to how this works so a top tip for you if you play with this your max frame rate really high try lowering it down to about 120 maybe even lower than that and you should see that chunks in your world actually load in better and this happens because the game has less FPS to render and that means it can put more resources into chunk loading. Now in pre-release 1 the game is going to aim for a 30 FPS minimum. If you ever saw less than that you should see an increase but things like chunk loading in the world might be a little bit slower than usual. Now chunk loading isn't going to take up more than 50% of resources at one time. And this also means if you had higher than 30 FPS, you may see a slight decrease, but overall the performance and stability of the game should be a lot sturdier. Now let's get into the bug fixes of this pre-release. Jungle trees, when grown with one by one sapling, can grow up to 12 blocks tall. However, in the 1.15 development, this had been shrunk to 10 blocks. So now they'll be able to grow 12 blocks tall again. If you had a barrier block in your offhand, you wouldn't be able to see the barrier block particle inside of the barrier block unless it was on your main hand. So in this pre-release, you will now see those particle effects when it's in your offhand. A bug has been discovered with horses. You can see this one is heading in that direction to a place it has picked to travel to. If we then move away and get off the horse, it will continue going in that direction. So what it's doing is pathfinding to the same spot. And of course you can see this becomes a big problem the further away from that spot that we go. If I just jump off of it here, it's going to immediately try and head back to that same spot. But in this new pre-release, when you get off the horse, it is just going to find a new spot to pathfind to. So I've got three bugs to show you. First of all, I'm in creative mode and flying around. And if I fly near the soul sand or the honey blocks, you can see these are slowing me down, which they shouldn't do. The next thing is to fly up here and place a pig and just watch it float down the side of the honey blocks here. Notice how it's not producing any particle effects. There's also been a big change to how items slide across 
honey blocks as well. So I'm going to throw a bunch like this and you can see how they pick up momentum in that direction and go off to the side. We are now in pre-release 2 and when I throw the items here you can see that they are behaving differently and also not producing particle effects. However, an entity like the pig will produce particle effects when sliding down. And if I fly around above the soul sand and honey blocks, you can see they are no longer slowing me down. If you are not aware, then let me inform you. The Taiga biome has some rare variants like Cold Taiga, Cold Taiga Hills and Cold Taiga M. And foxes weren't able to spawn in some of these. They've been added to the list, so now they're able to generate inside of all the Taiga biomes. Many of the menus in this world have multiple options that you can go deeper and deeper into and press and escape used to take you all the way back to the main menu. Now what it will do is take you back one step at a time. So previously pressing escape would bring you straight to this screen which it will no longer do. With all the changes to the rendering engine, the Elder Guardian effect which gets played when you get mining fatigue, this one right here you can see was out of position. For some reason it was appearing higher than usual. Another rendering change meant that the ender pearl cooldown wasn't translucent, it was just solid white. When we interact with this horse you can see that its name tag is rendered kind of wonky. It's actually based on the position of the player as well. And that's a pre-release 1 bug that won't be in pre-release 2. Having lanterns two blocks above the bed would make the player crouch when they go into it, which looks really bizarre. Just for a frame of reference, this is what the player should look like. And here's what it looks like with the lamps. You're not going to see this happen in pre-release 2. There was also a bug that caused the effects of a different type of arrow, like a tipped arrow or a spectre arrow, to actually be passed onto the Enderman, even though they didn't take damage and they would teleport away. You can see that they get the spectral effect. That'll be fixed in pre-release 2. Also, something I missed in the previous updates, you would have seen that using... A egg on a zombie pigman and a zombie have been patched so it produced the baby equivalents. That now works on the drowned mob as well. You can see there's a baby drowned and the zombie villager. So to wrap up this snapshot video, chunk loading should now be a lot smoother and that is certainly what I have experienced. Your frames might be slower but once you get past 60 it's pretty difficult for the human eye to measure that stuff anyway so if you're getting around 60 fps you should be good and the game would be far more stable now i uploaded an episode of hermitcraft yesterday if you didn't catch it then i'll put it on the screen and in the description box and be sure to leave a like if you want to support the channel and this video and make sure you subscribe to catch the future updates but that's it from me so thanks for watching and i'll see you later bye bye